Hello everyone, in this video we'll be explaining how to create 3D designs in Vectric VCarve Pro. In this video we're going to be designing the 3D baby feeding bowl like the one you can see before us. And as you can see it's also two-sided so we'll be explaining how to go over this feature of VCarve also. Before we get started though, it's first important to explain what exactly what we mean by 3D carving when it comes to CAD CAM. A 3D cut is the one where the cutter is moving in the X, Y and Z axes simultaneously. This is unlike a more common 2.5D cut where there is some movement in the Z direction but this is limited and separate from the movement in X and Y. So for example, a pocket cut, the cutter will move in the Z direction before making its first pass in X and Y and then move again back down in the Z direction and so on and so forth. Whereas in a 3D cut, the cutter will be moving in X, Y and Z simultaneously as it moves to make the cut. For example, as it would be over the surface of this bowl. So, having explained exactly what we mean by 3D carving, we can move on to demonstrating how to work with 3D designs in Vectric VCarve. The first step is to design what the job setup we are going to be working with. We'll be cutting the bowl from a 300 by 400 by 40 piece of bamboo. So, let's go ahead and put, input these parameters into our job setup. Of course, if you're working with a different size stock, this would be when you would put in your own job parameters. This job is also going to be double-sided, so let's check that box. And we want our Z0 position to be at the material surface for both sides. And we want our XY data position to be in the bottom left corner. We also, for the sake of simplicity, we'll also set our flip direction as horizontal. Since this is a 3D design, it would be best to leave our modeling resolution as high as possible. And with that, we can get started. Once we've finished with the setup, we can start our design. In this tutorial, we'll be working with the 3D clip art designs that come with VCarve Pro. It is also possible to import your own 3D designs into VCarve as .stl files, however that will be beyond the scope of this tutorial. The first thing we need to do before we get started with designing the bowl is generating some dowel holes that will keep the stock in the same position when we flip it over to machine the bottom side. This is a key aspect of two-sided designs. This is quick and simple. All we need to do is create a circle vector with a radius to fit our dowels, which in our case is 4.25 millimeters. Then we need to just put this 25 millimeters away from each corner of the stock, which we can do here. And once we've done that, we can just go and create another one in each corner, remembering to put it 25 millimeters away from each side. Next, we can go and create the toolpaths for them. We'll do a pocket toolpath with a finishing pass to make sure the circles are even and fit the dowels well. So let's open the toolpath tab and click on pocket with all four circles already selected. We'll be using a six millimeter end mill and be cutting to a depth of 48 millimeters, well through the entirety of the stock and into the spoil board. We'll be using the offset strategy and we'll have 16 passes, which may seem like a lot. It is important to reduce the load on the cutter as much as possible since we'll need to use such a long one for this job. Additionally, since the cutter will retract with each pass, this will clear out the hole being drilled and give us a cleaner cut. Next, because we're including a finishing pass, we'll leave a pocket allowance of 0.5 millimeters, which will clear up with a profile tool path. Then we can go ahead and calculate. With the same circle vectors selected, let's go to the profile tool path to add a finishing pass. We'll set the cut depth to the same as before and we'll be using the same cutter. We want to have a single pass and to be cutting from the inside. We can leave everything else and then press calculate. With that important bit of work holding done, we can move on to designing the actual bowl. The first component we need to add is the main 3D dish, which will form the two sections of the bowl. So we need to go to the clipart tab and open the clipart folder. We can find our required shape in the domes and dishes folder of the clipart folder. We will be using the 90 degree dome, but other domes are also available. So, double click the icon of the dome, it may take a second or two to download, and then it should appear in the center of your stock. We will then need to resize it to make it appropriate for our bowl. So let's go back to the 2D drawing tab with this 3D clipart selected, and go to the set selected object size feature. Then we can go ahead and resize it to 190 by 190. Once we're happy with this, we can begin to actually model it in 3D. So go to the modeling tab, which will take you into 3D view, and you should see just the dome and sheet components. Note this only has the 3D components of your file being displayed here. So don't be confused if you don't see any normal vectors you may have in your design. Before we start to change the properties of the dome component, 
we need to add a Z0 plane. This acts as a reference point at the surface of the material, since VCARV doesn't see the surface of the material as a 3D object. Once we have added this, we can begin to set the parameters for our 3D models. The first thing we need to do is change the way the shape is incorporated into the stock material. Initially, 3D components have their highest point merged with the previous component. Since we want the portrait to be carved into the material, we will instead be subtracting it from the previous components, which in this case is the Z0 plane. Setting this will make the dome be indented into the material rather than protruding. Then we will have to set the height of the component, which is how deep the dish will go into the material. We'll set the depth of the dish to 32 millimeters. The base height is the height at which the model will begin to curve in. In this case, we'll leave it at zero. We'll also not be using the fade or tilt features. The bake feature saves the parameters of the 3D model as a default, allowing for further manipulation beyond the limits given in the tab. We will also not be using it in this case. Then, when we're happy with the beginning of the dish model, we can carry on with the other features of the bowl. First, we are going to create a circle vector going around the dish from which we'll have a vector boundary for the 3D toolbars. We'll then go back and add some ears to this later on. So, go to the drawing tab, click on draw circle and create a circle with a radius of 200 millimeters with the center point at the center of the material. Next, we want to create the semicircle vectors which will form the top and bottom sections of the bowl. So let's create another circle at the center of the sheet, this time with a radius of 175 millimeters. We are going to then split this circle into two semicircles and use the semicircles as the toolpath boundaries of the dish so we can get two sections. The simplest way to do this is to draw a line vector splitting the circle in two and then trim the lower half of the circle, giving us a semicircle. Then we can copy and paste this vector and use the rotate feature to flip it upside down and move it away from the top half. We want to have a gap of 20 millimeters between the two semicircles. Now we can begin to see the dish beginning to take shape and we can move on to creating the decorative features for the bowl. The first thing we'll do is add some ears to our bear's head. We'll do this by drawing a couple more circle vectors on top of the larger circle and then we'll add a dish model to the inside of them. So let's create a circle in the top left corner of the sheet and move it into a position we like on the top of the bear's head and quickly go and do the same for the other side. Then we can go back into the clip art tab, grab a couple more of our dome dish models, resize them and place them into the center of the sheet. They should flip nicely into the center of the circle vector. Then we can go back to the 3D modeling tab and find our two 60 degree dome dish components. We can double click to open their modeling tab Set the height to 10 millimeters, and again, we want this to be subtracted from the previous components, and we'll rename this to left and right ears to avoid confusion. The next thing we're going to do is add, was go back to the 3D clip art tab and select another 60 degree dome dish, which will be the nose for our bear. We'll place this down here in the center of the bottom section, and we'll set the radius to 20 millimeters. Then let's go over to the modeling tab, rename it to nose, and set it to add to the previous component so this will protrude out of the bottom of the bowl, and set the height to eight millimeters. The final bit of decoration we want to add is the eyes, which will go into the top section. For this, we'll go back to the clip art and grab one of our, a couple of our trusty dome dish 60s. We're going to make them into an ellipse, so first we'll remove it up to where we want in the bowl and then we'll resize the eyes. This can simply be done by resizing the size of the component, either by double clicking or using the resize objects feature. We'll set this to 55 by 60 and go into the modeling to set it to add to the previous feature and likewise set its height to eight millimeters. Then we can just copy and paste this and move it to the other side. Next, we want to add a vector for a little mouth detail. For this, we are going to use the draw curve feature. This can be a bit difficult to replicate exactly. The best thing to do is to draw a few curves you'd like in the corner of the stock and choose the one that looks best. When doing the other side, 
simply copy and paste the curve, then rotate and duplicate horizontally with the rotate tool as shown. Then we'll just add a little arc going between the two curves as a final cute detail. So if we go to add an arc, click on the lowest point of one of our earlier curves, then go to the midpoint between them further down, and finally click on the lowest point of the second curve. This is one of many ways you can add a detail. Feel free to play around and find what you like the most. Now that we can begin to see the bare face beginning to take shape, we can move on to the toolpaths. The 3D carving toolpaths, we typically divide them into two, a 3D roughing toolpath and then a finishing toolpath. The th roughing toolpath is done with a larger end mill, which is better at clearing away the space, for the finishing pass to then go through and have some nice curved detail. So the first thing we'll do is create a roughing and finishing toolpath for the top section of the bowl, and then we'll repeat for the bottom section. If we select the main dome dish, click on 3D roughing toolpaths first. If we're going to be using a typical 6mm long end mill for this, let's go ahead and select that from the tool database. The main thing to remember is the total cutter length needs to be long enough to go up to 50mm deep, so bear that in mind when choosing your tools. After this, we'll go and set the tool path to only machine inside a selected vector. This is how we can get the two different sections to our bolt. So head back to the tool 2D tab quickly, or bring it up side by side with the 3D view, and click on the semicircle vector from earlier. The machining allowance is the area that the cutter will leave for the finishing tool path to clear away. Since we'll be using a 4mm ball nose cutter, we're going to set this to 0.2mm, so we have less stress on the cutter. In terms of the cutting strategy, in our case, it will be better to go with the rastering. This will hide the grains of the wood better and prevent strands of the wood from breaking out when this is at a 45 degree angle. If you are using another material, such as a food safe plastic, however, the Z level is typically quicker, so I would recommend that in that case. We'll rename the toolpath to top half roughing, so we don't confuse it on later on, the dine, later on down the line, and then we're done with it. Next, we want to create the finishing toolpath, but first we can take a quick look at the preview of the roughing toolpath to illustrate the difference between that and the finishing pass. So, if we go to the preview tab, and select Preview Selective Toolpath, we can see how the Z-Level strategy works and the area it leaves for the ball nose to clear out. To create the finishing pass, we need to go and select the main dome dish again, then click on the 3D finishing pass. So go and select a 4mm ball nose end mill. Then select the same semicircle as the roughing pass for the machining limit, and we'll include a boundary offset of 1.5mm. For the finishing pass, it'll be faster to use a raster strategy, so we'll go with that, we can leave the angle at zero degrees. Now we're happy with this, we can click finish and preview this toolpath as well. So you can see the difference the finishing toolpath makes by adding the 3D detail. We can go through the same process for the bottom half rather quickly, as it's pretty much the same, the only difference being the vector we use as our machining limit. So let's go back and do the 3D roughing toolpath, this time with the bottom semicircle as the machining limit, and do the same for the finishing toolpath. Now after the preview of these, we can really see the bowl beginning to take shape. The next toolpath we want to create is for the mouth detail, which, will simply, which we will simply engrave into the bowl. So with the vector selected, we can click on the quick engrave with a 60 degree V-bit and go for the outline strategy. Now we won't actually be using a nose cone for this operation, but this is the simplest way to do the engraving with a single pass. So let's check that box and set the height to 30 millimeters. Then we can click calculate and go onto the ears. Since the ears are fairly small and shallow, we don't really need to use a roughing pass. So with the left ear dome dish selected, we can go straight to a 3D finishing pass. We'll be keeping this inside the inner ear vector like we did earlier, so select that, but otherwise we can all use the same th parameters as our other 3D tool paths. Then we can quickly go and do the same for the right ear. Now let's take a quick preview of design by going to the preview tab and clicking on preview all toolpaths. We can then have a look at the bowl and make sure there are no problems. The final step before designing the next side is to save the toolpaths appropriately. Toolpaths need to be grouped by the type of cutter they require and VCarb won't allow you to, let, to save different toolpaths that use different cutters to one file. So let's go and select all the toolpaths that 
who use an endmill and save them to an endmill file. Likewise with the bullnose cutters. And then finally we'll save the vbit toolpaths and we're done. On to the flip side. So now let's go to the bottom side of the sheet by clicking on this toggle button up here. We want the same bare shape as the top side, so we'll start off with another 90 degree dome dish. We need this to be a bit bigger than the top side dome dish, however, so we have a rim going around the perimeter of the dish. So let's set this dome dish to 210 by 210 and go to model it. We want to add in a Z0 plane again, and this time we want to add the bowl to the model and set the height to the full thickness of the material, which is 40 millimeters. Then we need to add the ears. We want these to be symmetrical with the ears on the other side, so let's quickly go back to the top side and find the center point of the ears, which can be found in the move selected objects feature. So if we just dot jot these down, so 91 in X, 293 in Y, and then on the other ear, 208 in X, and again 293 in Y, and then we can go back to the other side. So if we grab a couple more dishes, then go to move selected objects, we can move the center so it exactly aligns with the coordinates of the ears on the other side. Then we need to resize, the, resize them so they're 10 millimeters wider on each side. We can do this through the resize selected objects feature. Then we need to go and model them. We want the ears to merge with the rest of the head, so we need to set the model as such and make sure the models are in the right order. Then let's go to the parameters for the let's go to the parameters for the left ear, rename it quickly. Now we went to we want to make sure that the ear is merging with the previous components, so check that option if it isn't already. Let's go ahead and set the height to 20 millimeters. We're leaving everything else, so now we can go on and do the same for the right ear. The next step after all the models are done is to create a boundary vector for this side, like we did on the top side. So if we create a circle with the same, dimension, same dimensions as the head dome dish, as so, and then we can go to create two more circles this time around each of the ears. And we can make this into one vector which fits around the whole shape by using the trim tool. The final thing for us to do is add a vector for the base of our bowl. For this, we can simply draw a quick 50 millimeter radius circle vector right in the center. Now that we have our Mickey Mouse vector, we can go and set the toolpaths for the bottom side. Like the bowl, we'll be using a roughing and finishing pass, so let's start with the, rushing, with the roughing pass. We'll be using the same end mill as the top side, and let's select the Mickey Mouse vector as the boundary. We will also be leaving a 0.5 millimeter boundary allowance again. And likewise, we'll use a raster strategy with an angle of 45 degrees. Then, onto the finishing toolpath. The parameters for this will also be the same as the topside bowl, so as long as they are still in place, we can move on. Then we can quickly create a, top, a pocket toolpath using a 6mm end mill, and it, which and may sit as 2.5mm deep, which will serve as the base for the bowl. Final thing we need to do then is create a profile toolpath to cut the bowl out of the stock. So if we select the head and ear vector we created earlier and click on the profile toolpath. We're going to set the cut depth to one millimeter below the end of the material, so 41 millimeters, and we're going to be using a six millimeter end mill. And we'll be going from the outside. We'll also add tabs, which will be five millimeters long and five millimeters thick. If we go into the tabs tab and have up to 12 tabs to give some nice evenly spaced tabs around the vector. Then we can exit this back to the toolpath tab and click calculate. Let's go and preview all our toolpaths. If we click preview all sides, we can see all of the toolpaths and how the finished bowl should look. So that's how we designed this baby snack bowl on Vectric VCarve Pro. If you guys want to see a tutorial on how to cut this bowl on the Smartbench, then be sure to check out our other video, which will be linked down in the description below. However, if you want to just get straight to cutting, then this file will be available for free on our website, Make It Place, so be sure to check that out. If you guys have any questions or requests for CAM tutorials, then be sure to leave those down in the comments. And thank you very much for watching, and we hope to see you soon. Bye-bye.